Oh, said Nicobobinus, I've been waiting for you, said the voice, and Nicobobinus felt five more thick fingers round his wrist. But Nicobobinus, instead of trying to run away, doubled himself up and went backwards as fast as he could, so the man's legs were knocked from under him, and he landed in a pile of leaves. Are you all right, called Rosie, but she didn't hear any reply except for the man who growled. Just you wait, both of you. Oh dear, said Rosie, sounds like trouble. And she was right. Chapter number two. Nicobobinus ran as fast as he could across the lawn, down the path, round a hedge, and into a little shed and bolted the door. Open up, cried the man, and the hinges creaked and the door shook as he banged it with his fist. That door's not going to last long, thought Nicobobinus to himself, and he dragged a large old stone roller up against it. Open this door at once, do you hear? The man was shouting, but Nicobobinus didn't hear anything at all. He was too amazed by what he had found. You'll have to come out eventually, the man was saying, and the longer you leave it, the worse it'll be for you. But he could have saved his breath. Nicobobinus was on his knees examining what he had revealed when he removed the roller. He brushed off the dust and undid the catch and then lifted it up. Right, I'm going to break this door down, said the man. And then, because he knew he'd have to repair the door himself, he added, Do you hear? But Nicobobinus didn't hear. Nicobobinus had disappeared through the trap door he had discovered and was running down stone steps that were slippery with slime and that smelled of graveyards. And that went down and down deeper into the ground until it became pitch black. Rosie, said Nicobobinus to himself, this is all your fault. He heard his heart pounding and his steps echoing along the dark rock dank rock of the narrow passageway until all at once there was nothing and therefore he realized he was falling in the blackness he was